Nigerians in the diaspora are an invaluable resource for national development. It is estimated that there are about 30 million Nigerians spread across the globe and with about 10 million top level professionals in medicine, education, ICT, science and technology, business and many more. That is not all. Nigerians in the diaspora also contribute over $21 billion annually as remittances to Nigeria. That is why the diaspora this week will be looking at preparations toward the Diaspora Day with the theme, Diaspora and Nigeria Change Agenda. Of course, do not forget our Diasporan of the Week, News and Your Mails. Welcome to the Diaspora. I am Gabriel Odu. Before we start our conversation, let us watch this background report put together by my humble self. According to the World Bank Annual Report for 2014, Nigerians living in the diaspora remitted over $21 billion to rank among citizens of the top five countries that remitted about $530 billion to their countries. For instance, Indians remitted $70 billion, Chinese $66 billion, Philippines $24 billion, and Mexicans $24 billion. Nigerians in the diaspora say they expect a good deal that will propel an improvement in the remittances. Next to petrodollar, petrodollar, by petrodollar I mean uh, foreign exchange from the oil sales. Diaspora remittances is the second biggest foreign exchange uh, entry into Nigeria. Between 2011 and 2014, diaspora remittances stood at $63 billion. On how well the remittances have impacted on the Nigerian economy, these remittances go to scholarships because they pay school fees for friends, uh, relatives, and all that in this country. It also uh, for medical missions, it goes to communities, it goes to uh, some friends and relatives who start small businesses. Remember that small businesses are the engine of every economy. If you look at the direct uh, foreign investment that we're talking about, this is a significant part of it. Because the co money comes into our system and go through, you know, whatever we want to use that money for. Nigerians in the diaspora are optimistic that with the right policies and implementation, diaspora remittances will surpass World Bank projections of about $40 billion. We now start with the interview I had with the Chairman, Diaspora Day Planning Committee, and Permanent Secretary, Political Affairs, Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. Ibukun Odushote. Why the Diaspora Day was established? Uh, I want to start by thanking you for granting this interview and this uh, interactive session. Uh, the, for a typical Nigerian, you may not really know why we want to be doing what we're doing now that every year Nigeria wants to celebrate its people. But for people that have interactions with uh, the global community, uh, either on the internet or even physically, you would know that on the streets of London, or whether it is in New York, or even in Japan, there's hardly anywhere you go you will find a Nigerian. All right. And um, they are contributing tremendously to economies of the world. And some of them, indirectly or directly, are also contributing to what is happening in Nigeria. So we feel that instead of just leaving them out there, we should actually celebrate Nigerians who are doing wondrously out there all over the world. A, a time to bring them all together, right. a time to see what they're doing, a time to appreciate them, 
a time to also lure them into coming back home. All right. Because we need the expertise, we need the experience, we need their fellowship. Uh, it gives them opportunity also to still take the culture of Nigeria to wherever it is that they are and then promote Nigeria because they are like our signposts wherever they are. We know we have some bad eggs amongst them, but that's not the issue because those are quite minimal compared to the kind of waves that Nigerians are making all over the world. Mm -hmm. And that's why I also feel it is a, a, a wonderful thing that this uh, program has been established uh, as far back as 2005, and it has gone on over the years that we are getting to the seventh edition of this program. So we feel all excited waiting for that day to come when we will see our own coming from every part of, Ni of the world to Nigeria and uh, having this time of interacting and knowing a bit more about ourselves. I must tell you, Gabriel, yeah. I'm looking forward to meeting some of them that they talk about. Right. In sports, we have some that are in boxing I was surprised when I was hearing those names, knowing that behind the stage names are Nigerian names. Right. And um, footballers, you're all kinds. They're doing different kinds of things all over the world. There's a, a young man that is coming all the way, Ufot, that is coming all the way from Japan. Mm. And I don't want to say what he does. I want him to come because until he comes, people won't understand what we're talking about. Uh, let's know uh, what is up for this year's uh, diaspora. Day. When is it coming up? The diaspora day is coming up on the 24th and 25th of August. The 24th, I would say that should interest a number of Nigerians in diaspora, as well as returnees that are even in Nigeria. A number of diasporans are back in Nigeria. Some of them really don't know how to find their way in Nigeria. We're going to be telling them the path to uh, businesses, right. how they can establish their business, the things they need to know. The Corporate Affairs Commission will be there. Ministry of Trade Investments will be there. We would have people that will be talking to them about uh, uh, the, 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 the spirit of doing business in Nigeria. And then the various opportunities are there. Smedan will be there, small and medium enterprises will be there. So that they will tell them, and we are going to be giving them also the opportunities that are available in terms of funding. The um, International Organization for Migration has some funds through the uh, European Union that's going to be available to diasporans that want to come back or that want to just establish small businesses in Nigeria. Yeah. We want them to know all the opportunities that are there. How much money is available here? What can I do that can contribute to development in Nigeria? And we will do that on the 24th. So it's an evening that we're going to rendezvous, we're going to interact, and then people will get to know what to do next. Then on the 25th, which is a diaspora day that right. we will be celebrating, we'll have the main conference. And the conference is going to be uh, centering on health, on education, youth, and sports. We're talking about youth development in Nigeria, youth empowerment. So a lot of emphasis is going to be along those lines. Right. And then in education, what, are, what do we need to do? The diasporans are going to come with all their experience to teach us some things that we don't know, all right. some basic things that we can learn from them. Mm. And then they too want to know how we do it here, yeah, exactly. especially the health sector. The health sector, we are bringing some very experienced Nigerians. They are names that we will reckon with in Nigeria. They have experience in running hospitals privately and in government, so they know how hospitals run. So that our people that intend to come bringing hospitals here, we are aware of some people that want to establish their own hospitals in Nigeria. They have investors that want to back them and bring them from the United States, from UK. They want to establish their hospitals. They've been having all kinds of hurdles. Yeah. They're going to learn how we are going to go about this. By the time we are done with this conference, we are expecting that we will have a clear understanding of what Nigerian diaspora has, the understanding that they have of our change agenda.
Yeah. Because that's the main thing. Yeah, that's I was where coming we're to going. Right. What's the, the, the focus of the, the, the diaspora day? What's the thing? Nigeria diaspora and uh, the change agenda. Mm, so that's what we want to see. Mm. They want to, we want to see their own contribution to the change agenda. How can we bring change to Nigeria? to the extent that development, we will see development in Nigeria, national development, a growth in our GDP, and um, we would also be able to tackle issues of corruption because when people are uh, empowered, when many things are good and it goes around everybody, uh, there's a limit to the level of corruption that you would have. Where you package the, the, the day and the conference, it looks like it's not going to be a jamboree. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it can't be business as usual. In mm. fact, Nigeria right now is not business as usual. It's business unusual. Right. And that's what we're saying. We have deliverables. And we must achieve these deliverables. It's not a time to waste any resource at all in Nigeria. The money is not there. So the little that we have, we want to properly apply it so that at the end of the day, we can be sure that we would achieve our objectives. Nigeria will move forward. The diasporas will be happy. They will go back to wherever they have come from, uh, really satisfied that there's progress in Nigeria. Next is a tax expert. He is insisting that Nigeria tax system should be overhauled in line with the change agenda. Good to meet you, sir. It's my pleasure, my brother. Once yeah. again on the diaspora. Always. Oh, I right. love your show, man. Right. How do you perceive the show? The show is wonderful. Everybody sees this show from outside, and they call me from Germany, from Britain, from everywhere to commend what I'm doing because we disseminate information from here, but you don't know the impact. Thank you. You are doing much. a great job. We are looking at diaspora and Nigeria change agenda. Yes. yes, let's talk about that. From independence 1960 to date, a lot of revenue has been generated in this country, both internal revenue and external revenue. Right. Now, the development level and uh, the uh, social development, I'm talking about the uh, condition of living in the country, is nowhere commensurate to the level of revenue Nigeria has gotten. Uh, people are looking for certain things. They are looking for steady power. They've not seen it. They are looking for steady water. They've not seen it. They are looking for food to eat through agriculture. They've not seen it. They are looking for good roads. It has not happened. So many things. Unemployment all over. We cannot continue to live like that. That is why they clamor for change. The new president now, when he ran the country in 1983-84, there was this uh, perception that he was an honest person with his uh, deputy then, uh, the general Diagbo. They did a good job for the period they were in charge of this country. And for that reason, people wanted him to come back. They want to see if he can still replicate what he did then. Right. So he is in power now. If, if all Nigerians will be positive, looking up to him to give us good leadership, because leadership has been the problem we have. We think that we'll get there. But we have to also remember that when we talk of change, no one man has the monopoly of change. But every one of us is responsible for this change we're talking about. It doesn't matter the level we are. Effect change wherever you are. What is your professional competence that you think you can bring to Nigeria to effect change? I am a chartered accountant and I practice taxation. That's my area of specialization. Uh, talking about taxation, if given the chance to advise on how we can improve our tax system, I said it, every Nigerian who is a taxpayer or who is not even a taxpayer should have a number. When they all have a number, it is that where you can isolate those who paid tax and those who didn't pay. It's through the numbers. It's not through the names. We shouldn't be doing things very crude because some of the people running this nation, they all studied, many of them studied abroad. They see how things work, but they don't want to do it here. 
The task cap can only be filled because there is so much money to be generated if those who make money will pay their own taxes. Mm. Because tax is a system of redistribution of wealth. If I'm so worthy, I pay a lot of tax. That will help to bring some social welfare to that person who is too poor. That is the most essence of that. You bring development to the people through the money. If the people pay taxes and they don't see what you do with it, tomorrow when you ask them to pay, they'll be running. So is that what is obtainable in the U.S.? Of, in the United States? Yes. No. In the United States, you must use the money. If people pay taxes, you've got to provide the amenities. That is why the district is on. Things are working. But, uh, but uh, here, it looks like in Nigeria, it's, a, yes. it's only the poor people that pay tax. The rich don't pay. That's what I'm saying. The reverse is the case here. That is wrong. The reverse is the case here, and that is wrong. Companies must be made to pay their taxes. Ha! Huh. If a company renders service to another company and get paid, the company that they pay to must report the amount they gave them to the federal inland revenue. If they do that, report them to the federal and say, I paid this man five million this year. I paid the other company ten million this year. I pay this one 20 million this year. The revenue, uh, the federal inland revenue, we use that as a lead to make sure that the other man, the company, pays accurate tax. Human beings, individuals, cannot pay all these tax. The bulk of the taxation comes from companies. You understand? Right. Exactly. So because another way they can do it also right. is to encourage industrialization. If industrialization is encouraged, People get employed. When people get employed, they pay taxes. No unemployed person will pay tax. Therefore, just make it possible for the companies to exist, for the companies to flourish. If they do so, they will hire all these people that are unemployed. And these people that are unemployed, when they get hired, they will be working and producing and paying taxes. That is the way economy grows. If people pay taxes, the taxes should be used to affect the society. If it's not done so the way they do here, like the old woman who is selling something on the street. You can see a, a, a collector harass her, she gives you the money, she gives her a fake receipt and pockets the money. Because of corruption. You see, we, whatever we do, we go back to that word corruption. If the society can be corrupt free and if people can do things in this country and get punished for what they've done. If you catch somebody and this this can come called corruption, and you put him in prison, even if it's only five years, other people will run away from it. But because there's no consequence for action, people continue to do what they do. And moreover, if OKK can do it and nothing happens, Kala will want to do it. After all, uh, Adamu did it the other day, and nothing happened. Mm. Uh, let me give you an example. Right. In New Jersey, where I come from, a senator lost his senior seat just for receiving a watch. A wristwatch. Can that happen here? He if didn't it, ask for it, it, it was given. He didn't even ask for it, it was given. A corrupt nation will not develop. Hmm. A corrupt nation will, will not, not develop. develop. Will Corruption not develop. is economic terrorism. If you are just joining us, this is the diaspora on the NTA. NTA, Nigerian Television Authority. For more information and news updates, visit our website at www.nta.ng or you can follow us on Twitter at NTA News Now or you can like us on Facebook at NTA Network News. Stay connected on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash NTA News Online. Watch our live stream at www.nta.ng slash live. NTA you can't beat the rich. The diaspora also engaged some members of the Diaspora Day Planning Committee. Uh, Nigerians in diaspora, their role in the change agenda is enormous. Um, Nigeria is one of the biggest suppliers of skill level all over the world. We export skill levels to all the countries of the world, and those skill levels that we export, we also need them in Nigeria. With the present administration 
an enabling environment has been created for Nigerians in diaspora to come and contribute their quota, and they are interested in coming back. Because to an average Nigerian in diaspora, um, for the first time in the history of Nigeria, they think Nigeria is moving forward. And they are willing to come back and contribute in all the sectors of the economy. We have experts in education, we have experts in the health industry, we have experts in, um, in uh, infrastructure development, you know, um, the roads and schools and all those stuff. So we are ready to partner with the government. So I want to consider that this Diaspora Day is a turning point for us as, di as diasporans and for this nation, and particularly for the leadership of this administration, because they are talking about change and we are now um, at the point where we have to strategically position Nigeria and Nigerians abroad in the manner that the change that the president has started with a visit to the United States, you know, will be sustainable, will be relevant even to the people at home. Yeah. The main thing is we want to bring the diaspora Nigerians back home people in different sectors for the scientific, technological, cultural aspect. You know, let's come together. Let's dialogue with those in Nigeria. Some returnees are even here as well. They too, they are invited. So let's come together with the government. Let's lay out some plans of actions that will help to move the nation forward. You know, the focus of Diaspora Day really is about coming together and repatriation to reverse the brain drain and make it brain gain. But we're saying if you're already succeeding, in wherever you are, that's wonderful. But we can still tap into some of your intellects, some of your expertise, and develop plans of actions that will help Nigeria to get better. Now, let's say this is about collaboration. We're not saying because you're in the diaspora or you came from the diaspora that you are better than those at home. It's about working with those at home because those different countries have their own unique characteristics. And we have to put that into consideration and taper whatever we developed in Nigeria for Nigeria based on our culture, based on our nuances, based on our infrastructure. And we dialogue and come up with plans of actions that can actually be implemented to improve the nation. Now to our Diasporan of the Week. She is a professor of nursing from Felix Dickinson University, New Jersey, United States. What's the driving passion that you have to uh, go into nursing? Whatever you make of anything, that's the way it will come out to be. I made a conscious decision to pursue that profession and to do what I can to improve upon the quality of care right from the time I was at the bedside. So I started as a bedside nurse and worked myself into bedside nursing to the management level, became a, um, a nurse administrator before I decided to go into education. So in education right now, my main goal, my focus is to improve upon the um, skills and competencies of those that will give bedside care because if they don't have those skills or the competencies to provide that care i mean the quality of care you are trying to give to the people i mean it's nothing mm. so you have to have the skills and the knowledge and that's what my role is right now to impact on that at that level so how have you been impacting well i've been i've i'm teaching all you know courses uh, initially i was doing all um, undergraduate courses but right now I'm doing graduate level courses, you know, so I teach those courses and, uh, you know, primarily in the U.S. there. Um, so um, teaching them, teach them how to teach others. So in nursing education, so my specialty, you know, um, I have dual specialties. I'm a clinical nurse, pediatric specialty, meaning that I take care of children. The smaller they are, the better for me, because that's the ones, that's my passion. Those little special children, kids that have, they can't, you know, you can't, they can't tell you anything. You have to figure it out. All right. So that's my passion. And then I teach that as well. So with that, I've been doing all that and teaching. 
So, um, and then teaching not educators. And that's really what brought me into Nigeria to begin with in the first place. I came into Nigeria focusing to um, develop the program that, you know, that will teach nurse educators, increase the number of nurse educators that we have because we do have shortage across the globe, including in the U.S. We are short of staff um, when it comes to nursing education. We don't have enough faculty to teach the students. So, and Nigeria being that people like me that are supposed to stay when I'm not here right. to increase the workforce. So now my role, my whole passion is to come back, offer whatever assistance that I can. And that assistance so far have been good to me they will, from my own assessment because I developed the program and people will enroll in the program to further their education so that they'll be qualified to teach nurses. Our email remains diaspora nta at yahoo.com or text only to plus two three four eight zero three three one one four zero zero zero. That's it for this week. Bye.